Kinda reminds me, I really need to finish my Thwomp Hammer in Monster Hunter Rise. It's one of the mods that I'm much more proud of. Or, not much more proud of. It's one of the ones I'm very proud of. I have Sunbreak. I'm like MR4, I think. And this is, unfortunately, the first Monster Hunter game where I've just had no motivation to continue. Like, for context, Monster Hunter is pretty much my favorite series. Every t single time a Monster Hunter game has come out, I've pretty much immediately played the absolute fuck out of it. And, uh, yeah, no, I mean... I don't, like, dislike Sunbreak. It's just, in general, kind of the direction that Monster Hunter has been going is not really... ...what I fell in love with the series for. It's the best way of putting it, I think. Um, as for Sunbreak, and the differences between, like, Sunbreak and, like, past Monster Hunter games, um... Honestly, it's just kind of, like, there are a lot of gimmicks. Like, wire bug moves, uh, silk bind attacks, that kind of thing. And, um, when you come from, like, old world-ass Monster Hunter, where you literally just had, like, a weapon with a relatively basic moveset, for base rise, the problem was there with Silkbind attacks. It just took kind of a while for it to really kind of... Because, like, okay, when I started the game, I was like, this is so cool, there's all these fun things, there's switch skills and there's Silkbinds, and, like, it was fun, but the novelty wore off pretty quick. Because, at least in Generations Ultimate, when, with your, like, special, like, super moves, you had to spend quite a while sometimes building up a whole ass meter by doing damage, right? Whereas, because wire bugs are directly tied into your movement as well, they have to be on a short timer. You only really ever have two, so... The biggest time penalty they can put on you is essentially just, okay, this wire bug move costs two of them. And they could make it so that, like, you know, the recovery time is really long on the wire bugs after that, which some moves kind of do. But even then, it's just, like, moves like Hammer's Impact Crater, um... It is Hammer's strongest move, and if you actually look at, like, a damage split for, like, Hammer gameplay, over half of your damage just comes from all the impact craters you land throughout the quest, essentially. And it's, like, it's literally, like, half of what you're doing. And if you don't enjoy how that feels, then your only real choice is to just not use the move and do half as much damage as any other Hammer user. Like... For context, I actually really enjoyed Generations Ultimate. Um, even though 3 Ultimate and 4 Ultimate are still like my favorite games in the series, um, Generations Ultimate is the one that I probably played the most. Uh, I pretty much did everything in that game, honestly. Like, all of the EX Deviant quests and stuff, that was uh, really fun, actually. Which is not something I ever thought I would say when I first heard about the X quests and did my first one. I thought I was never gonna touch them again and then I actually met people who Oh. Oh shit. Yeah no like GU is just fun. And it's like, yeah, it's it's a departure from like classic Monster Hunter and it has gimmicks, but like the gimmicks are at least not quite as uh I don't know central. Like, when I play Gunlance in Generations Ultimate, I'm playing Gunlance, and then, like, if I do enough damage, maybe twice in the quest, I'll be able to do a big, like, nuke move. And, like, maybe at two other points in the quest, I'll uh, activate, like, my shelling buff thing. And, like, that's, that's, that's Gunlance gameplay, just with a couple extra things tacked on, you know? Whereas, if I want to play Gunlance- No! I want to play Gunlance and Sunbreak. It's like, unironically, you have a nuke option ready. Like, every 20 seconds, you have a constant shelling buff you have to maintain, like, I think also every, like, 10 to 20 seconds. And you are just constantly using these new moves. And that's kind of the, the problem that Sunbreak, not Sunbreak, um, Iceborne was sort of starting to introduce for me, where it's like, the core moveset of the weapon that I fell in love with became irrelevant in the face of all, like, the new flashy moves that they added for each weapon, to the point where 
gameplay. Gameplay for Switch Axe wasn't playing the original Switch Axe weapon. It was using the new zero sum discharge move that they added that lets you latch onto the monster. I'm just kind of trying your hardest to use that move as much as possible because it was by far your highest source of damage, you know? I think that best kind of sums up how I feel about these things. I'm not saying they're bad, I just... When the weapons that I fell in love with, because, again, I... Not again, but... Just for context, like, I play every weapon in Monster Hunter, and... When almost every weapon has, like, a completely different gameplay style and identity that kind of... Just doesn't even feel like the same weapon anymore, it's just kind of... Hard to enjoy for long periods of time. Like, the gimmick... Is like fun at first, but then like it wears off, you know what I mean? But yeah, honestly, that's just really the best way to sum it up. It's just the, the new gimmicks can be fun, but like they just dilute what I like, and the novelty unfortunately wears off way faster than if I just had like the weapon that I like to play and could just keep playing it. It also doesn't help that Capcom has this problem of, like, seeing that something's a success and going, oh, okay, they want more of that, and, like, kind of very slowly but surely, like, flanderizing it. I don't know if that's the right word, but, like, I don't know, when something starts out one way and then just gets, like, more and more extreme and more and more, like, maybe jumping the shark is the term? I'm not sure. I would say Generations Ultimate kind of started it, but Generations Ultimate was also supposed to be a side game. It was supposed to be a spin-off, not like the new standard for the main series. And then they made World, and then they made its expansion. Oh my god. I mean, I'm willing to admit that like, I'm probably a minority in how I feel, because like, there are so many newer players who like started with World and just really love this stuff, and it's like, yeah, if that's the weapon that they fell in love with, and then you took away like all or most of that move set, and made it like feel like some janky old game that they could never get into, I can understand why that would not feel good. But at the same time, ooh. It's just kind of hard. I really wish they would just kind of make the decision to have, like... Because, like, the thing is, there are two consecutive Monster Hunter series running at the same time. Not really consecutive, but it's, like... There's the quote-unquote portable series, and then there's, like, the mainline series. And the portable series are just... I don't know. It's, it's not really portable anymore, but it started as, like, the portable series. It has a different director. It's the same guy who did GU and the same guy who did Sunbreak. And, um, basically, his games, uh, started on the PSP, and started as, like, the Monster Hunter portable series of games, which were different from Mainline, and have continued to kind of differ in a lot of ways. Like, for instance, uh, Portable 3rd, that was the last one with Portable in the title. That was one of that director's games. And then, uh, oops. And then after that, we got, uh, Generations, which was another one of his games. So I really wish they would just make the decision, which they might still be about to do that, but I don't know. But I really wish they would just make the decision to go, okay, Mainline is classic Monster Hunter, uh, Portable series is spinoff, and I guess I'll just call it spinoff series. Spin-off series is spin-off, and it can have, like, crazy attacks and crazy weapon move sets with all kinds of flashy stuff, but, like, there's also just, like, the marketing angle, too. Like, they want to have cool stuff to show off on Twitter and clips and stuff to market the actual game. And I honestly think the people at Capcom just straight up think, like, Monster Hunter wouldn't sell if they went back to the normal formula, or the old formula. Because, I mean, to be fair, they have seen how successful Monster Hunter World was. The most successful game in the series, and I think one of Capcom's most successful games ever, if you consider Sunbreak. But yeah, I'm a big Monster Hunter fan. You guys all know that now, because I sat here and talked about it for way too long. And it's like ultimately when it comes down to it. I don't hate Sunbreak. It's just not like what I was asking for. 
it's fun, but like the novelty of all the new stuff just wears off way too quickly. And that's why I've had almost no motivation for the first time to actually complete a Monster Hunter game. It also doesn't help that every time I turn the game on, I just want to work on my mods anyway. Well, it's really funny. I have more hours in Sunbreak just turning the game on, going to the training room, testing to see if, like, the model is displaying properly, and, like, the materials are actually not garbled. And they're just being like, okay, this is good. I'm going back into Blender and just obsessing over small details. Honestly, the more people that I know of who have it on PC, is even more motivation to finally get back into it at some point. And if you like Monster Hunter, I think it's a game worth playing. That's, that's what it boils down to, I think. Uh, depending on what you enjoy from the series, it might have more or less replayability. That's honestly up to you, though. 